Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, I am uh, Izar Gilboa. I'm the CTO and uh, one of the co-founders at uh, Finout. Uh, we are a company that uh, specializes in uh, observability. We offer a wide variety of tools like uh, virtual tagging and uh, um, cost per unit and also uh, cost per tenant. And uh, what I would like to talk about today is to uh, share with you the, the journey of how we attributed uh, our cloud cost to per tenant and to uh, uh, give away some takeaways in how to do that uh, when you want to tackle that same uh, exact uh, problem uh, in your uh, environment. So let's begin with, uh, with a question. Uh, why would we even want to do that? What uh, value do we have in uh, attributing our cost to, um, to our different uh, customers or, in, or tenants? And the first and foremost, the, the reason that we'd want to do that is because we want to measure what matters. And uh, I'll explain what I mean by that. Uh, let's take, for example, a, a company that uh, one year after another um, multiplied its uh, cloud costs by, uh, by two. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And uh, the answer for that it is uh, it depends. Uh, as you can probably uh, realize, it depends uh, if, it, uh, if this company sold like 10 times more of its product and it has 10 times uh, more customers, then it's probably a good thing. And uh, if it had no change at all uh, in terms of its uh, business health, uh, then it's uh, probably a bad thing. So uh, uh, here we uh, kind of uh, uh, take uh, costs and attribute it into something that, uh, that for sure resembles the health of our business. And the deterioration in that is probably going to mean uh, uh, deterioration in the business health. Um, also, it's a great tool for uh, R&D departments and finance departments to communicate better because the entire conversation is becoming uh, more, uh, um, more actionable, uh, let's call it that, in terms of uh, what finance can do with the information and what finance can tell uh, R&D as a lead as to where to start uh, checking uh, for, for issues. For instance, uh, uh, the, the uh, answers they might get from R&D uh, could be uh, uh, better ones because they would know how to ask the right questions. For example, why did this uh, specific customer's margin deteriorate? And then R&D could go and check and to say, oh, it's because they're using mo much more expensive queries or uh, things like that. And as I will uh, show you uh, here today, we're talking about a, a generic solution, not uh, something that's specific for, uh, uh, for tenants, but something that you could uh, apply uh, when you want to attribute your cost to per project or per team or uh, whatever any business uh, logical unit that you uh, would want to attribute your cost to. Um, any questions so far? Great. So um, what are we going to get uh, in the end of this uh, uh, wonderful journey? Uh, this is what we uh, chose to display uh, in our system, uh, a high-level uh, display of uh, each of our accounts and their uh, costs, also with a column for margin to see uh, uh, how much uh, we are uh, making profit or making loss uh, in some cases on each of our customers, and to be able to drill down for each of these uh, customers and to uh, see their consumption of our different, uh, 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 different subsystems, as we will uh, describe uh, uh, later on. Um, but it's important to, uh, to emphasize that uh, you can take this data and plug it into any uh, dashboards or any BI system that you are used to working with uh, in your uh, system. So um, let's begin. Uh, let's first talk about uh, the challenges uh, in uh, building this entire, uh, uh, let's, call it, uh, let's call it story of uh, uh, allocating cost to uh, uh, business, uh, business uh, units. Um, so yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be complicated, um, but it does uh, uh, comprise, it, it's comprised of three uh, main uh, aspects, and uh, one of them is the cost that we need to put all in one place, the second is the tenant data, uh, for instance, what is the entire uh, list of our customers and uh, how much uh, does each of them uh, use in any of our uh, sub-products. Uh, and we are going to make uh, uh, a lot of use in Kubernetes metrics and to tie all of this thing together and explain how uh, the fact that we are uh, using Kubernetes as we are heavily dependent on Kubernetes in our solution, uh, how it helps us and uh, what we can do with it. And uh, we'll show that uh, uh, 
once we have all of these uh, three data points, uh, how we're going to put it all into one meaningful story. Uh, any questions before we begin uh, talking about uh, these uh, uh, three challenges? Great. Uh, so first, uh, let's talk about uh, getting cost data. So uh, uh, I assume all of you probably, or uh, maybe uh, some of you who can't be, uh, due to uh, regulations or restrictions are running on, uh, on clouds. And uh, usually uh, your cloud provider provides a detailed list of uh, uh, your cloud costs. Uh, for Amazon, it's called the uh, cost and usage report. Uh, for uh, GCP, it's called the uh, billing uh, uh, data set in your uh, BigQuery. Uh, and it's usually a lot of data. Um, for uh, larger companies, it can be uh, hundreds of uh, gigabytes per day, and that's only for one cloud. Uh, once you go multi-cloud, this uh, problem gets uh, uh, more and more difficult to handle, and data becomes uh, a lot more vast. Uh, and also, it has different structure, right? Because uh, if I use Amazon, uh, Amazon is using a different structure for its data, um, different from uh, GCP or, or Azure or uh, uh, things like that, and let's also uh, throw into that uh, mix also the uh, software services that, that we may use, like uh, Snowflake, like Datadog, uh, which, as you can see here in the example, is not uh, negligible. It's something that uh, usually uh, we'd like to include when allocating what's our production costs to customers. Uh, so this entire challenge is actually uh, talking about taking all of the different uh, uh, sets of costs that we can't handle, that we'd want to uh, allocate to uh, logical units and put it all in one place, putting it all in a, a one structure that we can query and that we could uh, ask simple questions like, what is uh, all of the costs that we want to attribute to customers? And uh, I can share how we decided to handle this uh, for our environment. Uh, we used uh, uh, Apache Spark with uh, the, our wide set of uh, connectors to many tools and we're uh, performing uh, ETL operations in order to structure the entire data into a single uh, structure. Uh, any questions about that before I move on? Yeah. Uh, who is the kind of people who's probably, who is the persona that you work in the customer side? Like, who is the one interested in this information? Uh, the, the, the CEO uh, mainly, uh, my, uh, my partner. Uh, yeah, we, we are a company of uh, uh, less than 40 employees uh, no, at the moment. So, in the customer side, the customer, on the customer side. What do you mean by that? When you go to a certain company, your customer, who is your user inside that company? You mean that, that uh, uh, us fin out when we uh, sell cost per entity? Uh, to, um, it, it's a wide variety of uh, decision makers, usually a, a VP r and or a CTO uh, a lot of times, or. Uh, Usually uh, this kind of persona, someone who's uh, in the gap between the uh, tech side and the decision-making side. Usually like that. Uh, if you want to ask any more questions or about Finout, I'd love to after the talk. Okay. Uh, so uh, any more questions about uh, costs? Great. So uh, let's talk a bit about uh, tenant data. And uh, the easiest way I found to do that that gets the point uh, in a... Uh, the, the most efficient manner is taking an example, and let's talk uh, about uh, Netflix as an example of uh, using uh, uh, tenant data. So let's imagine the entire Netflix system uh, was running on uh, one single server. Uh, how would we even start thinking about attributing its cost to the different uh, set of uh, customers that a huge company like Netflix has? So, uh, of course, there are different uh, customers and uh, some cost more than others. Uh, for example, I'm a great uh, customer for Netflix because uh, I pay uh, the monthly bill and uh, uh, consume uh, quite uh, little. Uh, so uh, uh, le let's agree uh, that uh, a customer of Netflix that uh, watches uh, double the streams uh, the, than me would probably cost them double. Uh, so uh, that's the, one of the base assumptions that we uh, uh, are going to work with and to uh, use that in order to allocate the, the costs of uh, multi-tenant systems that we cannot uh, uh, technologically, let's call it, uh, uh, break down by uh, uh, tags or, uh, or any other means. Uh, so uh, uh, in, in real life, there are uh, more examples that, uh, we, uh, can, uh, uh, that we can share that we are uh, encountering, and that's uh, uh, for cybersecurity companies, uh, there are the number of uh, scans that they uh, perform on their uh, 
uh, customers' uh, uh, accounts, and then uh, they can attribute uh, the entire cost of their multi-tenant uh, system based on the number of cans that were performed, uh, number of gigabytes in ingested for uh, log indexing uh, companies. Uh, that uh, uh, that's the preferred method of attributing cost in their system, and usually this. Uh, uh, this data source contains uh, a lot more in, in interesting data about the customers, for example, ARR, and uh, that could uh, enable us to talk in margins. If we uh, ingest not only the consumption, but also more metadata that's uh, interesting to show in this entire uh, database that we're building, that would also, be, uh, that would also prove very helpful in the final result. And uh, where can you usually find uh, this uh, sort of data? So companies usually store this in uh, their BI systems where they store uh, all of their, uh, their, their entire list of customers and uh, all of the metadata on them and the ARR and the uh, usage in the system per month is uh, usually there. Uh, it's uh, often streamed into data warehouses. We've seen a lot of users uh, choosing uh, Snowflake uh, to uh, store this uh, information in. And uh, Salesforce is also an example of uh, uh, where this uh, information may be found. And, uh, and that's about it uh, in regards of uh, taking a, a, a set of costs that's uh, multi-tenant that cannot be split and using metrics for that. Any questions about that before I move on to Kubernetes? Great. So uh, let's uh, talk a bit about Kubernetes. And uh, uh, the reason I uh, talked about metrics uh, uh, before that is uh, because what we are going to apply in Kubernetes is very similar to the method that uh, I just showed you regarding, regarding metrics. Uh, because uh, if we think about all of the uh, Kubernetes metrics that uh, most of the standard solutions uh, uh, monitor on our system, uh, we'd uh, end up with uh, a lot of metrics that represent uh, usage per pod, uh, consumption per pod, CPU consumption, memory consumption. and. Uh, uh, what we decided to do is use these metrics as a building block in order to uh, split apart the, the underlying EC2 nodes that these pods were running on, uh, thus enabling us to uh, be able to use all of the pods metadata as, uh, as the most granular unit of cost that we are able to, uh, to attribute costs to. And that's, that was extremely useful for us because a lot of our pipelines, we, we are a company that uh, has a lot of uh, data pipelines, as I will show uh, in uh, uh, later slides. And uh, this was a very crucial feature for us because uh, we could, after applying such a solution, we uh, immediately uh, were able to uh, ask uh, questions like, uh, what was the price for data pipelines for this customer on this day? And uh, it, uh, it handled like, half of the complexity of our system uh, uh, quite easily. Um, any questions about that before I uh, move on? Great. Uh, so uh, essentially what I uh, showed you here is the uh, three challenges and how we can tackle each of them uh, individually. Uh, for costs, what we can do in order to uh, gather all of the costs and put it in one place. For uh, uh, metrics, where we can uh, find them and what we can do with them in order to allocate um, multi-tenant data. And uh, for Kubernetes, uh, you, we can use these metrics in and apply the same uh, uh, metric-based uh, uh, approach that we saw earlier and get pod-level data. So let's uh, uh, take an example system and uh, bring this uh, entire thing uh, uh, together. Uh, let's take an example uh, system. This is like a simplified uh, version of our uh, uh, of our system, it ingests a lot of data uh, from the uh, left side, and uh, it has like data pipelines and a data warehouse and uh, the application. And as you can see, all of the things that are uh, uh, running in the in the system, we are running on AWS, as you can see, all of the things that are uh, uh, running any workload, it's in Kubernetes. Even the Spark is in Kubernetes. The 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 application is in Kubernetes, and even our uh, data warehouse is in Kubernetes. So uh, we decided to. Um, uh, apply a Kubernetes solution, and we uh, figured out we, we're going to have to do that in order to uh, allocate our costs. So um, the first thing when you want to allocate your system costs in, uh, into uh, uh, logical units or customers is to identify which subsystems uh, contribute to the total cost of customers. So we're going to uh, start with that, and for simplicity, we'll describe here uh, two subsystems. One is the 
uh, ETL side, the, the batch side, the nightly workflows that uh, run uh, pods per uh, different customer and uh, runs every day. And the uh, second part is the data warehouse and the Finote application side. And uh, uh, we are going to use the, the Kubernetes solution that I showed you earlier and apply it on that. And if from the cloud provider, we are able to get all of the EC2 nodes that uh, for every day we're serving our system in order to uh, do the daily uh, workflow for these customers, after applying the Kubernetes metrics and storing it all in that uh, same uh, unified uh, uh, location I described earlier, we are essentially creating a place where I can uh, get all of my customers all of my customers' cost uh, for a, a complete subsystem only because it runs in Kubernetes and I have pod label customer on that. It's that simple. Uh, once you uh, uh, break apart uh, uh, your uh, cloud bill according to a Kubernetes solution. Um, so uh, uh, that side's been uh, taken care of and now we need to uh, uh, move to the, to the other part of the system. Uh, any questions uh, so far? Yeah. Essentially, yes. Once you, once you apply a generic uh, Kubernetes solution to uh, break apart each of your EC2 nodes to uh, uh, the, the cost of each uh, uh, pod, you can actually ask questions like, what does this pod label cost me uh, every day? Yeah, exactly. So, it means that Sometimes it's more natural and sometimes it isn't. In, in uh, this subsystem, it was. It, because we are actually running a certain uh, pod for a specific customer uh, every day, yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. Um, that method that you suggest is also works for the cost of other like, API calls and like that? Yeah, yeah. We, we are actually using the, the metrics approach uh, to t take apart uh, also uh, other multi-tenants uh, or, or API, uh, API calls, exactly, yeah. Yes, that's right. So how can you attribute uh, each part of the task to the customer? So we are actually taking apart the in situ nodes and storing our uh, centralized, uh, uh, let's call it warehouse, the, the billing records per pod. The, 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 when we query uh, our, uh, our centralized uh, data warehouse, we, uh, we, we ask uh, questions like, how much does this pod label cost me? It's no longer uh, considered a, a node. It's, uh, it's losing the meaning of uh, being a node, and it's stored as the different pods that were running on it. And, uh, does EKS provide uh, cost per pod, or? That, that was something that we uh, uh, developed uh, ourselves by using the metrics uh, from, uh, from Prometheus, or you can also use uh, metrics from Datadog. But there are products uh, that do that for you. Yes, exactly. Uh, the, the, this uh, set of products uh, that uh, uh, CubeCost is one of them, Finout is one of them, uh, are uh, connecting to your uh, cloud bill, connecting to your uh, metric systems, and are able to take apart each of the nodes and to uh, uh, l let you access uh, queries like how much does each pod label cost me? Exactly. Yes. That's exactly what I'm gonna uh, talk about right now, and that's exactly the case in the uh, the area on the right here, and that's uh, why the Kubernetes solution does not solve that yet. Great. So uh, I'll uh, move on to uh, solving that. So in in such a case where your even your uh, finest uh, granularity unit is multi-tenant, what can you do? So uh, what we can do in that case is uh, actually. Uh, Try and look at it in a, in a bird's eye view, even a higher level, to stop trying to allocate the finest granularity to per customer, but to ask yourself, okay, what is this subsystem? What's its purpose? What's, uh, um, what's representing consumption per customer? If you remember the example of Netflix earlier, uh, what's, uh, uh, what makes me a more expensive customer than other? And that's where we turn to our uh, more generic uh, metric solution and uh, 
think what, uh, what makes sense uh, for us to attribute costs according to, and uh, we chose uh, query durations. Uh, another good example that we uh, could have chosen is the amount of data scanned. If a customer is scanning uh, 100 gigabytes per day and uh, another customer is uh, scanning uh, 200 gigabytes per day, I mean in queries, not in uh, the data pipeline, but when querying the system, that would make them, uh, that would make the 200 gigabytes uh, customer uh, twice as expensive as the 100 gigabytes customer. And that's the method that we apply for, uh, for this uh, right-hand side of the, of the architecture. Uh, no, it's not... Uh, so that's how we, uh, sorry about the different uh, uh, design for this slide compared to the, to the previous, but that solves us the, uh, the entire uh, uh, architecture that uh, uh, I showed you earlier. And uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, uh, chose to present it all in uh, dashboards that look like this, but you don't have to, uh, uh, but it's just raw data that you can use anywhere in your system. You can plug it to your, uh, Looker or BI systems and use it uh, whenever you like and get alerts according to that um, and uh, plan budgets according to that. Uh, the sky is the limit. So uh, let's sum it up. Let's sum it up. So, uh, uh, what we can do once we have our Kubernetes utilization, um, see the timer moving here. Am I uh, good on time? Okay, great. Uh, so uh, another thing that's important to mention is that once we apply a Kubernetes solution is uh, we have uh, immediate access to see how much uh, underutilization uh, we have in our, in our system. And then we are uh, faced with two options. Either we can optimize this, uh, like ask ourselves, why is there underutilization? Why do we have such uh, high idle values and to uh, act upon it? Or to also allocate and attribute the idle part to the customers because uh, we'll always have a certain amount of idle. It's, it's part of our production. There's no way, uh, no way around it. And we want to have a smart uh, uh, way of also attributing these costs to our different customers. Uh, so that's that. So uh, for, uh, in order to uh, conclude everything, I wanted you to, to get a certain amount of, uh, of uh, takeaways, uh, how we can uh, uh, analyze the system when we uh, want to uh, attribute its cost to customers. So uh, first, we want to uh, identify our uh, subsystems. Then, uh, if it's uh, uh, if the system is running Kubernetes, we probably want to apply uh, some form of solution that uh, is able to take apart these uh, these costs to the Kubernetes level, so we'd have access to ac the actual pod or namespace cost. Uh, for the multi-tenant part, uh, we'd ask ourselves, is there a metrics that I can split these costs by? Um, and essentially, that would give me uh, the entire uh, access to taking any cost I want in the system and uh, attribute it to uh, per customer. Uh, so that's that. Uh, that's it. Uh, any questions? Yes. So uh, th that's a good question. Usually data transfer occurs due to uh, a certain operation that uh, happened in the system. If this operation is easily attributed to a customer operation, uh, we need to ask ourselves what this operation is. Does it happen uh, on the demand of the customer? Does it happen uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, relation to how much data each customer is uh, uh, processing? And you, you see where I'm going with this, to, to try and find uh, the, the reason this uh, operation occurred, and if there's any uh, uh, proxy metric that we could uh, allocate this uh, cost according to. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you very much, everyone.